Okay. Now you can see, right? What are magnets? What are the characteristics of magnets? How can we test the strength of the magnet? And finally, last two, right? The last two part, right? Maybe we don't have time for it today. So I actually broken up magnets into two sessions. Okay. So maybe next week we might be looking at how to make magnets. That'll be interesting because I'll be showing you some cute videos and also one big video on how to make a magnet and how a magnet is useful to us. We carry on the next week. This week we look at the first three points. Okay. So what are magnets? Okay. We will deal with that. What are characteristics of magnets? We'll deal with that. And how can we test the strength of a magnet? Okay. Those of you who know what are the changes that happened to today's lesson? Okay, of course, besides the point that Mr. Ali was like logged out and he's missing from the whole screen. It's okay. At least I managed to get more people in. Today I have 30 people inside the class. Wow, it's more than last week. That means they should. <laughs> I was thinking, you know, actually my team and I, we were wondering, um, since school reopened, you should have less students, but actually you're having more because I think you are more in the school mode already. Suddenly now there's work, there's school work, there's homework, there's tests coming, there's exam coming, you need to study. School holiday, you'll be like, ah, yeah, mommy, you don't have any homework, no test, no need to study, no rush, right? Uh, then usually tomorrow, maybe PSLE, I'll see more students also, because PSLE is coming and then they're panicking. You guys don't need to panic. You're going to be with me for a long time. Prepare you for PSLE to this high level. Okay, don't worry. Okay, let's go. Um, so these are the three points. So do those of you who actually seen the difference, like I said, um, First difference, yeah, of course I was me. Second difference, you had to register for today's lesson, right? So it looks like all of you managed to because I do have all of you back here. So you actually managed to register and have a password, which will be the norm from now on. Next week onwards, you need to be logged in. Then you can come into our class. Okay, that's one. Two, the homework which you saw compared to last week is different, right? Because you always can see the questions in your homework. This time you couldn't see any questions. You just saw a poster to say you should go and look at lesson number 22 in the website of course because you're already logging in you have your own password so you can access the site the objective is to let you know that when you access the site you have access to so many things and when you access lesson 22 what do you see besides the questions you were able to access all the videos that i posted up for you yes those of you who have seen the videos at least three videos on magnets that was interesting so if you didn't do your Prerequisite homework, you didn't see any videos. If you're the lucky one who actually did the homework, you saw some videos. So you are the lucky ones who are the hardworking ones. So next week, you won't forget to do your homework because there are always videos waiting for you. So videos gives you a, an idea of how the lesson is going to go, especially some of the graphics and videos actually help to explain the concepts better. And then the teacher is required to go through these questions. So that's what I'm here for. Okay, although they, there are some uh, cartoon characters explaining what's magnetism, what's water cycle and all that. They do not go through the questions with you. These questions are the questions that appear in your class. So that's what I'm here for. So we'll go through them in detail. So the notes that you see here, okay, now this is the first page. Also, those of you who are very, very hardworking may have actually gone into the lesson which I conducted before the questions in the website, which is similar to the one here. So we'll just brush up quickly. Most of you will know the answers. Some of you who have not been that hardworking, have not seen this, you have to be hardworking now. You have to put in the answers now. You have to type the answers to me now. I have to see your hardworking right now, okay? Because I only received the submission from you, okay? Based on the attendance today, only half of you submitted or 20 of you submitted, that's two thirds, okay? I still need 10 people to pull up their socks. Before you pull up your socks, the first thing magnets have to pull some things, okay? Some pull some objects, here you go. The first word is pull, what is pull? Is there another word for pool? Okay, I'm filling up the first one for you. Okay, those of you who are very good with the keyboard want to type, please type out the answer straight away, okay? Magnets are special objects that pull. We can say pull or usually in the magnetic terms, you say attract objects, okay? And magnets are special objects made of what? Usually metals, huh? not non-metals such as okay these are the common because they are 
strong metals to make uh, iron, uh, magnets because iron, we call it actually a soft magnet. Okay, this is extra information for you. Uh. This is a hard magnet. What does it mean by soft and hard? It's not like rubber soft. Soft means it, okay, it be, becomes magnetic easily. And loses magnetism easily. Now, this is what we'll go through next week, but I'm just giving you a head start. This one will become a magnet. Difficult, hard to make, or hard to make a magnet. Hard or difficult to become a magnet. It'll take some time or more effort. And also, once it becomes a magnet, it's difficult to lose its magnetism. That's what this means. But this, this points next week, we'll go through it in detail. So that's why I'm not too worried about this. I just want to like touch on it and go, touch and go, you know, very fast. For those of you who already know what's a soft and hard magnet, good. Those of you who don't know, next week you have to come and learn from me for this part, okay, in detail. Today we do the simple stuff and the simple questions. Uh, if the questions are simple for you, I don't know if it's, for me it's very simple. For those who love magnets, it's very simple. That's why when you love something, it's very, very simple. So when you start to love science, science is very simple. You start to love math, math is very simple. That's right, right? I'm not joking, right? All you primary three, four, by now you realize after going through primary one and two, you're like, yeah, all my favorite subjects, I do very well. All my not so favorite subjects, like Chinese, uh, not so good. Then make Chinese your favorite. Start watching more Chinese programs. Once it becomes your favorite, okay, maybe you should watch cartoons in Chinese. How many of you watch cartoons a lot on Netflix and Prime and anything, any other YouTube and all that. Okay, what are your favorite cartoons? Okay, do you know that on Netflix and Prime, you can just change the voices of these cartoon characters to any language you want? Could be Arabic, could be German, could be French, could be Chinese. And then if you switch it to Chinese and watch it, of course, the first time you watch, maybe you don't like to watch it, but maybe you're watching it for the second time. For example, I'll give you a very famous cartoon like Paw Patrol. You know Paw Patrol very well, right? You know Peppa Pig very well, right? All these cartoons are put into our Netflix season by season, right? And then you've got season one. You finish in one day. Then you want to go to season two. Season two. All the cartoons you watch in a day. I'm sure a lot of you did this during your holidays. Okay, what happens is after you watch season one, season two, all of them were in English. And then season four comes and says, oh no, Paw Patrol's and whatever cartoon is ended. What do we do? Okay, sometimes you repeat, want to watch it again. Especially your younger siblings, if they are four years old, five years old, they love to watch it again and again. So you can suggest to your mommy or daddy to say, mommy, I want to improve my Chinese. Can you put Paw Patrol in Chinese? If you are smart enough, you know how to do it yourself. If you don't know, get help from your parents. All you have to do is go to the settings. Okay, you can change captions, I mean subtitles, or you can change the audio, meaning the characters themselves speak in the language which is very difficult to do because that means they got a whole set of people to actually talk like the characters in Chinese. Try it and if, see if it's funny for you. If it's funny, then watch it because it's funny means it's entertaining. Watch it and then over time, you are going to come to learn to watch Paw Patrol in Chinese. But it's not that you don't understand. You do understand. Plus, you've watched it in English before. So you're just watching it in another language. And then for the fun of it, maybe the next time you can watch it in what, French, Malay, uh, German and also on and so on okay yeah try it and if you do let me know next week uh, whether it was fun or not okay some of you will remember some of you will forget to do it okay let's do the identification of these magnets on the board by writing down the names a lot of you know that this type of magnet exists but do not know how to name them what do my do i name mean by name them? this is called a bar magnet right this is also called a bar magnet because both of them looks like a bar. This one is a U-shaped magnet. This one is a U-shape also. Okay. This is also U-shape, right? However, there's one more shape that looks like a U-shape that is horse-shaped magnet, horseshoe-shaped magnet. That is a little bit looking like this okay what happens is the two poles here which are, i'm going to do it in white 
the two poles here are actually closer to each other. Whereas a U-shaped magnet are not close, they are just at the same level. Can you see the difference? Whereas here, they are closer together. Okay, so that's the difference, but they are both like a U. Okay, that's a slight difference. Take note of that. Then what about the others? Can you name them for me? Can you type for me? There are three more there. Any, any names of these magnets? There are three more which I have not named. Okay, I give you multiple choice. One is called a ring. One is called a button. One is called a rod. So which one is which? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? Easy. Yeah, because the ring, of course, looks like a ring, right? People wear rings on their fingers, so it should look like a ring. So that's easy. Or it should look like a donut. Donut magnet. Shall we call it donut magnet? If you and I were in charge of the science textbook, both of us would call it donut magnet. However, the very boring science person who named it a ring magnet is very boring, not like us, very interesting. Okay, donut magnet. Yay. Okay. Let's fill up some more. Okay, those of you who have been filling up, very good. Keep it up. Let's fill up this one. A magnet can what magnetic materials? Okay. This is English now. Close passage. Come on. Let's do it. Close passage in science. I make things interesting. Come. Only if you fill up, we got more interaction, more participation, more fun. Don't fill up, you just sit down here, you look at me, I look at you, what's the point, right? Then you might as well just off this uh, computer and just go and eat your lunch or eat some donuts. <laughs> if you're here, try to participate. This is just one hour. We've got 40 more minutes and then we're off. Bye-bye. And then you can do a lot of other things throughout the day. You can go and sleep also. How now? Bye. Assured that with all this practice, you're going to be better off than your student or classmates in class. Okay, number one, a magnet can. Very good. Only attract, not repel. Not repel yet, okay? Why? We talk about it in a while. Why not repel? Okay, those of you who can pull, actually it's better to use the word attract. Now, from now on, use the word attract. We are in the magnet chapter already. We jumped into the cartoon already. No more using pull. Pull is a very general term. I pull you, you pull me, right? Can I attract you? Can also. <laughs> okay, but there is a no need to use a physical force. Attract can mean no need to use a physical force. So no need to touch each other. You can still attract. That is magnet. Okay. A magnet has two poles. Very good. Still freely suspended magnet points in the not only north, but in the south as well, which is normally north-south like this. Okay. So and it's freely hanging means it's hung on a string. And it's usually when you leave it to leave it to swing, it will just point towards the north-south direction, which is the magnet, the what? Earth's north-south pole. Okay. And then a magnet can attract and ah, this is the this is the difference here. Repel. Here you can attract and repel another magnet. Okay, what does that mean? You have a magnet. Okay, you have the North Pole, South Pole, and then you have a paper clip. Okay, it can only attract, right? It cannot repel. That is this one. That's why number one is only attract. It can only attract a magnetic material. It cannot repel. They cannot push each other. They can only push each other if the other object is also a magnet. Okay, now that then the, the poles also matter, right? So if the pole is north pole, will it attract? No, it will repel. If the pole is south pole, will it attract? Yes, it will attract. Okay, so let's complete all the diagrams. So we have a few options. This one will repel and push it away. So this one will attract because of the pole. This one will repel. And this one will only attract. No repel. So whenever you want to see whether the object is a magnet or not, you have to check whether there's repel repulsion or not. If there's repulsion, 
then it's a magnet. If there is no repulsion, then it's a non-magnet. It's just a magnetic material like a paper clip. So this is the point that you have to pick up in today's lesson. If you pick this up, you will never go wrong. Okay? Because in all the multiple choice, you will be asked whether this is a magnet or magnetic material. This is a magnet or this is a magnetic material. Because it's very different. If you have a paper clip, is it a magnet or is it a magnetic material? If you have a paper clip that's relying on your table. It is the magnetic material because you got to test whether it repels another magnet or not. If you have any metal objects on your table, you just take it. Okay, it could be a stapler. I have a stapler here. Those of you can see. See, it looks metallic, right? Do, will we call this a magnet? Will we call this a magnet? Dep you take another magnet, you try to attract this. If this attracts, this is a magnetic material. If it repels, it could be a magnet as well. So repel, repulsion is the most important point to know. Okay, so the attraction of the magnet is the. Okay, this one I fill up for you. No need to fill up. Strongest at these two poles. Okay, wherever there are two poles, is the strongest here. At this part, this pole here, and strongest here as well. Both sides, huh? not one side. You can never say north pole is always stronger or the south pole is always stronger. Both sides are as strong. Okay, but it's weaker in the middle. That also, please take note. Okay, not super, completely no magnet. It's still a magnet, but the magnetism is weaker. Because the whole thing is a magnet. So you can't say there's no magnetism in the middle. There is, but it's very weak. Okay, but it's stronger at the side. So you can compare the strength between the sides and the center. So that's important as well. Take note. So we have done magnets, types of magnets, names of magnets, the poles. What they attract, they repel. Wow, done so much in 10 minutes. Let's do compass. A uh, compass, some of you may have seen it, some of you may not have seen it. It's inside our phones, it's inside our watches. It's just an instrument to show us the poles that we are facing, which direction are we in. Or if we have a magnet nearby, we can actually find out the pole of the magnet. For example, you have a blank magnet. See, a blank magnet like that. And one side should be North, one side should be south. We don't know. So how do we test? Bring in a compass, put it near it. And the needle will deflect to show us something. Okay, it will show us something. So a compass is an instrument. What it will show us, I'll teach you soon. How to find out. Okay. A compass instrument that can help what? Identify or show us the poles okay there you go okay before we start on of course this one you know right like poles repel opposite repulse retract we just did that just now so if it's south south it will repel you see and north south if they're opposite they attract okay very simple very simple this one so don't have to think too hard if they're opposite they attract if they are the same pole, they repel. Okay, how about compass? Remember compass? Let's see. Okay, let's see if I have a pole like this. And I don't know what poles they are. And then I put a compass here. Okay, and the compass shows like this. Okay, what are the poles that I can give the name for this side and this side? If the direction is shown is like this. Okay, so what is a direction what is b direction if you can fill up for me then you are aware of how the compass shows you the poles if you don't know then you have to sit up and listen to me so let's tell me a is it north pole or south pole the question uh, the answer is not in the diagram it's not here it's not here okay it's not here. The answer, this is totally a separate. Maybe I should go back to the compass page. Okay. Maybe I should. Okay. Let's not confuse all of you. Some of you are like really looking for the answers here. No, 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 no. Let's go back here. Oh, no, no. Go back here. This is cleaner. Okay. Now, better. So the compass I put nearby, it shows an arrow like this. Okay. So tell me what is the pole of this and what's the pole of this? What's the A pole and what's the B pole? 
Uh, now you think you're thinking, you're thinking, how is this possible? How am I going to know? Okay, so now in order to know, okay, any north pole will always have its magnetic field lines going to the south pole. So now you see this is north. Okay. So the first magnetic field line will be going this way. Can you see? Because field lines means the strength of the magnet. Okay, the field lines will go from north to south always. Okay, north to south, even this way also. Okay. So therefore, it will happen again. There will be a lot of field lines. So you see the compass is sitting on a place where it is going to the right. So therefore, this must be north. This must be south because the field lines are going from the north to the south. Right? So I can remove this compass just to make sure you all understand the concept again. I can remove this compass because I only have one compass. Huh? I don't have 10 compass. So I put this compass here. What do you think? the arrow line will be inside the compass. See? The arrow line will follow the field line. So it's like this. Right? Now, let's move the compass to here. Just follow. If I move the compass to here, we will follow that the arrow will be following the same thing here, like this. Understand? So the compass will keep changing the direction depending on the field lines around the magnet. And based on that, we will discover what the polarity of the magnet is. Okay. You may think you understood, right? Very good. Okay, let me see if you understood. Let's waste time, waste time here. It's okay. I'm going to test you whether you understood what I said. Now, this is the compass showing the direction. What pole is this and what pole is this? A is, B is, type for me. A is, type for me full. A is north or south. Remember the compass line is going in. When the arrow is going in, it usually go into the south pole. Only the north pole, it goes out. It's always like this, okay? That means a compass line will go out of a north pole and go into S pole, south pole. So this is what will always look like. So wherever the arrow is pointing out of the pole means that one is the north pole. If the, the other side is going into the magnet, it means it's south pole. It will always be like that. And the arrows will be in the same direction. Can you see that the arrows are in the same direction? It's going to the left. Okay? So if I switch the magnet around, turn it away the other way, it will move to the... It will be like this. Like I say, it's okay to spend some time on this because this is only the interesting or difficult part of magnet. So if this is north and this is south, I switch it around, then the arrows also switch around. But both are in the same direction because after all is going out of the north and going into the south cool okay difficult part but these questions are not in your today's homework okay it will come up maybe next week because i want to go in advance on next week but i'm still teaching today because at different points of time i feel it's necessary to just give you guys some more some more information i will just do it okay so that we do not just do all the boring stuff because uh when things are the same that you already know, it's no point. But if you want to know more things, yeah, then it becomes interesting. Okay, so let's go to this picture. This is a picture where you have floating objects. And you wonder how can it float without even dropping. After I put five objects in, it did not, it did not touch each other. It just started floating. Why? Because they are not just normal objects not normal object they are not just made of wood they are magnets 
Yes, this is the first conclusion you can come up to. And since they are magnets, and they are not touching each other, there must be repulsion, which means repelling each other. If they repel each other, then they don't touch each other. They will push each other because of the magnetic attraction, uh, repulsion. Okay. So therefore, you can determine the magnetic poles of these two. What? If one side is north, the other side must be not south, but must be north as well, because north and north repel. If one side is south, the other one must be south as well, because south and south repel. So if you know the pole of one side, for example, I'm going to shade here. You see the green one? This side. If this is what north, then the one sitting at the bottom is the south. Here is south. Am I right? If this is north, then this one is north also because north and north will repel. Okay, let's look at it in another diagram like this. Okay, so you can see if I put the magnets in the correct order, that means I don't flip it accidentally if i flip it accidentally what i'll get is the picture on the right they will start touching each other because it's north and south then they attract pop, 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 pop. all of them attract and then you get one piece of stuff stuck together this is all attract okay this side they are all repelling and in order to do this magnetic effect you have to know your poles and put them in the correct direction if you put it in the wrong direction you're going to get the opposite effect of what you want. So it depends. You want to get A, you want to get the left-hand side diagram, or you want to get the right-hand side diagram. If you want to get left-hand side diagram, you think through magnetism. What should I do? I should put them in a pole such that they are repelling each other. So the pole should be like for light. So this side here must be the same as this side. So if this is north, this is also not. So therefore, this side then is south. Can you see? So I must actually interchange my, so one is green, one is yellow, one is green, one is yellow, okay? And then you can get your effect, all right? Okay. How do we test the strength of a magnet? Okay, this one. Some magnets are stronger than the others. We saw so many magnets, bar magnet, rod magnet, rock, coin magnet, no coin, button magnet. Some of you call it coin magnet. Coin and pattern is about the same. Ring magnet, some of you call it cylindrical magnet, rod magnet, and U magnet. Okay, how do we test? We bring it to a magnetic material and we see how strong it attracts something. Of course, the best is to test like a number of paper clips. We call it paper clips, huh? but it's not made of paper. Don't make the mistake, please. Paper clip is something to clip the paper, but then it's still made of metal, right? Okay, usually made of iron or steel. Okay, that's why they are magnetic, because these are magnetic materials. If they are made of plastic, then it's not going to attract. I don't know if there are some clips that are made of plastic as well. You're not going to attract. Okay, even the clothes pack that we have to clip our clothes, most of them are plastic, not metallic. But those that we try to do with paper for paper are magnetic. We do have plastic as well. So be careful on what is the exact material of your paper clip. Don't use a plastic and then say, hey, how come it's not attracting? My, mag my magnet is not attracting the clips, whereas your magnet is attracting. Because the material of the clips may be different. They must be of magnetic materials. And what are these magnetic materials? There are four. How many of you know what these four are? Can you fill up for me, type for me? I've given two in the circle, that's iron and steel. What are the other two more? Those of you have done before, you've been taught in school already, especially primary four, help me. Iron, steel. Good, Selene, thank you very much. VG, correct answer. Pranshu, you only gave me one answer. I need one more. I need four, right? But I already have two on the board. I need the other two. What are the other two? Juvi, thanks. You're correct. Okay, so the rest want to participate or don't know. <laughs> don't know, then listen to me carefully, okay?
how many of you watch uh, Britain's Got Talent or America's Got Talent or Singapore Idol or American Idol? Okay, these shows where people come on stage and show their talent. Okay, Hedwig, you watch, right? Okay, I know I watch it too. It's really fun to watch this Britain's Got Talent, right? There's so many videos on uh, YouTube. Okay, those of you who haven't started watching, beware. If you start watching, you're going to get addicted. So don't tell your mommy or daddy, I taught you how to see Britain's Got Talent. But it's interesting to see because it's after all, it's not just singing. It's, it's a show where people come and showcase their talent for a chance to win the grand prize of performing in front of the queen in England, which is how the show started. Okay, so it's very interesting. Now, Cobbler is now singer. What did I do right, right there? Oh, I actually got this for... Because in the talent show, what happens is if you can sing, suddenly you become a star, right? So this cobbler came on stage and he started to sing. Cobbler means what? A person who fixes shoes. It's actually a very difficult job and doesn't pay well and you are really poor, usually. Otherwise, you wouldn't be cleaning people's shoes or mending shoes. But you have a skill. But if you have a better skill, better talent to sing, then you go on stage and you sing and you open your mouth and the judges go, wow, you are great. And they sign you up and you become a singer, you become famous, right? That's what usually happens, right? Hedwin, you watch, right, Hedwin? So it usually happens and then they become a star. Can you imagine the number of albums they sell and how, how rich they become? Usually it's very rich. So this is uh, from Rex to Riches story. So this Rex to Riches story is how I always remember my four magnetic materials because this is iron. This is steel. And then I have two more, which are nickel <clears throat> and Okay, now starts with C, what C? Okay, some of you gave me the answer, right? Okay. There are many, many materials that start with C. Copper, cobalt, and some others. So those of you who say, sure, I think I will not like to see the cobbler become a singer. I want a cop. He's a policeman. He came on stage, he could sing, and he became a singer. So you remember as cop is now singer. But if you remember as cop, then you will think, Copper is one of the answers here, but which is not, is totally wrong. That's why I don't advise my students to remember copper, a cop as a policeman, but rather remember cobbler because cobbler will indicate you the answer for the correct choice of material, which is cobalt because C-O-B, C-O-B. Okay, you'll never ever forget, even when you go to sec one, sec two, sec three, sec four, 100, sec five, 100 <laughs> A levels, until like me, old man, also still I remember because I will not forget these four letters. And there are only these four letters which are magnetic in nature. Okay, remember this and you will get these questions in magnetism correct. Okay, co co Cobbler is now singer. Is the Rex to Riches story about how this cobbler became a singer and went from Rex to Riches. That means he was from poor to rich. And therefore, it helps me to identify the four magnetic materials. Clear? Good. Can, can I also use coins? Pranshu, what do you mean by can I also use coins? We should uh, elaborate. Cobalt, iron. Yeah, can. Coins. Okay. So there are other other ways to remember. Okay. So pranshu is it? Yeah. So he said coins. So he's doing C O I N S. This is coins, right? So he remembers cobalt, iron, nickel, singer. It's up to you how you want to remember. Okay, but I remember cobbler so that I can remember co cobalt. If I use coins, I'm afraid three years down the road, I may think CO as copper because copper and cobalt, they will start with CO. So how to differentiate? That's why I chose cobbler. You understood? It's up to you what you want to do. Of course, teachers in school teach you also a lot of other mnemonics. Okay, mnemonics. Okay. All right. This is how you test the strength of a magnet by trying to attract lots of paper clips. Okay, Celine also taught me another mnemonics, which is she uses children is now smart. It's okay, I'm sharing with all your ideas because you, this is a live class. When you share, I must bring it up. Otherwise, no point, right? You must give, I must give. 
must I must take you must take okay so i'm taking from you children is now smart i'm sharing with the rest so one why is it singer children is now smart or children is now singer also can everything is also can anything as long as you have c i n s why because c for cobalt i for iron n for nickel and s for sugar no no s for steel okay it also doesn't matter if you have your own like like I like to eat chapati. I like to eat pizza. You want to have food names like C for C for chapati, I for ice cream, N for uh, Nutella, S for sugar. Oh, can so can right? Can as long as I'm not asking. I'm going to ask you to write these down. I'm going to ask you to write the name of four materials, which are cobalt, iron, steel, and nickel. If you can remember this in any way that you like, no problem. Okay. Okay, this was the homework given to you. We are here. We arrived here finally. We have eleven questions to go through, but I don't see you guys having any difficulty finishing these questions because this is week one. Next week we'll do a bit more magnets on how to make a magnet. Like I said, I promise you, I will show you a video next week. Okay, next week don't forget to come in and join me. Okay. Now, Faisal was given a rod to test if it was a magnet. He could test the rod if it was a magnet. This is the key word, ah. Huh? If it is a magnet, you need to use repel. If you can use repel, then you can find out if it is a magnet. So, should we use some plastic cups? Should we use some similar rod, or should you use to see if it repel, or should you see if it attached? Attract. Oh, this is attracted, attached to the rod. Okay, to see if the magnet attached the rod, which is attracted to the rod. Also, another similar rod to see if they were attracted together. You do not use the word. Attracted or attached because you cannot test if it is a magnet. You need to use repel. So only answer is C. Any interaction that means you could be attract or repel. So you have to talk about repel only. This one, remember, I kept saying this is the ultimate. Ultimate lesson that you need to take away in today's lesson. If you don't, then this whole chapter crumbles down into pieces. You have actually learned nothing. Okay, so you need to know about this. All right, this one is the strength of a magnet. Very simple. No need to read too much about the top. Let's look straight into the diagram. If I bring this magnet closer and closer to the nail, it starts to attract the nail. So I have four magnets. I have magnet A, magnet B. They are all different strength magnet C, magnet D. Okay, so magnet A attracted this at eight cm. Magnet B at nine cm. Magnet C at two cm. Magnet D at four cm. Can you see which was the weakest magnet? There's one magnet that needed to be very close, then only can attract. There's another magnet that can be very far and can attract. So which is the strongest? Okay, I redraw it so that you could see. It. So this is the strongest magnet. Am I right? Why? It could attract a nail on a uh, paper clip from as far as nine cm. That means super strong guy. All right. Okay. So this one, make sure I draw same. Otherwise, you may say, "Hey, why the magnet look different?" See, all are same size and everything, but based on the distance, C is the weakest magnet because it needs to go so close to attract it. Am I right? So they say based on this, right? Start with the weakest. Start. Hey, take note. Huh? Start with the weakest. So always. Start with the weaker, so you look at just this one, am I right? And the weakest is C, so therefore, which one is the answer? Can be this one or this one, right? So only these two can be the answer, am I right? Am I right? I only found out C must be the weaker, so it will be placed right at the first. So answer can be B or C. You want to choose B or C. Now, the next weakest. This one must be in order. Okay, 
place them, arrange them. Okay, remember, you must arrange them, not anyhow. Uh, arrange from the weakest to the strongest. So the next weakest is the 4CM1, D. And of course, the strongest is B as well. I've got it. Okay, so answer must be C, not the, uh, any other way around. So it is perfectly arranged in order. C first, weakest, then D is the next weakest. A is slightly stronger, B is the strongest. So I know for sure my answer is correct. This, I have to double check again and again for this type of question. Make sure I do not get confused. Again, same thing. This one can do very fast, right? Okay, no need to see the question. Just see the, no need to see the left hand side. Just see the question on the right hand side. Based on the result, which magnet has the weakest magnetic pull? So see me circling. This one, no need to arrange. Huh? You can arrange or you don't arrange, also up to you. Which one is the weakest? Just identify which one is the weakest. Now, the weakest one must go very close to the nails. Must go very close. If it's very far, that means very strong. So which one went closest? I'm going to shade. This one and this one. is going close to the nails to pick up. The rest can pick up from very far. So it's strong. So it should be A or C only. But they go very close and only picks up two. Whereas the other one picks up three. So which is stronger? A is stronger. C is weaker. Where, where it is the weakest then. So therefore, answer is C. Understand? Because it goes so close, not only can it not pick up three, it only pick up two. So compared to A, C must be even weaker than A. That's all. The others can pick up two or three even when they're so high up. So they are pretty strong. All right. Anybody want to say anything now? Kason, what's up, Kason? I hear you shouting from very far. What's up, Kason? Let's hear Kason. I'm going to unmute you. Yeah, you request. I'm a very nice guy. I will unmute you. And let, hopefully you don't scold me. Are you going to scold me? But I don't see your name, Kason. How to unmute you? Okay, unmute. Yes, Kason. I wanted to answer the question. Oh, no problem. There are so many questions to answer. Okay, next one I'll let you answer. Okay. Okay, let's go. But Kason, uh, Kason, relax a bit, lah. You know, the way you say is unmute me now, now. You should see the, the way Kaysen, uh, Kaysen, relax, Kaysen. Okay, you can just put up your hand or just say, uh, Mr. Ali, I want to answer the question. Then I will unmute you, no problem. But if you say, unmute me now, I don't know for what, maybe you want to scold me or what? Okay, for what, unmute you. Okay, and then everybody will be, unmute me, unmute me, I don't know what you don't want to unmute you for, okay? But just say, um, can I answer the question? Then I will unmute you, no problem. Because I'm watching the chat going on also, I will pick it up. But Sometimes I miss it, then you can just repeat that again. Okay, don't worry. So how, okay, Sten, ready for question four or no? Can or no? This one, question four. Or you want to answer a particular question? Okay, la, never mind. Okay, Sten, you can even answer all the questions, no problem. Okay, okay, Sten, this question, right, is about horseshoe magnet. Which part of the magnet will attract the most number of clips? It means the strongest part of the magnet. Which is the strongest part of the magnet? The strongest. Remember, it's at the poles. Huh? If you have a bar magnet, it won't be at the center, but it'll be at the side. This is the strongest part, and this is the strongest part. What are these? These two are called poles, remember? So these two poles are the strongest. So where are the poles for this? Okay, so the poles are, I'm coloring it here, actually. The poles are north and south, are at the ends. So one should be north, one should be south. Right? Yes. So they have labeled it. So which one is it? Did they call it A, B, C, D? Which one? A. Yeah, correct. Very good. All of you understand? Okay, Kason had a little bit of trouble identifying which is the strongest part. You may think, that's why some of you may think the whole magnet must be strong. Well, how come only some part is strong? No, yes, the whole, whole magnet is a magnet. Yes. But not the whole part or all the parts are as strong. Okay, the strongest are at the poles. 
strongest are the pole areas, which is the colored ones. You see, I'm coloring the pole here on the right also. Anything, bar magnet, uh, U-shaped magnet, they have poles. Go and find where the poles are, the North Pole and the South Pole, which are the ends of the magnet. How about something like that? Remember we had a magnet like this, this uh, button magnet. There's a top and a bottom, right? So top, this part is, say, North Pole. Then the bottom here is South Pole. Remember we put a lot of magnets over one on top of another just now, and they were floating. Yeah, I'm talking about those kinds. Or it could be a hole in the center, also no problem. So it could be a hole here, also no problem. It doesn't matter. But one side of the coin, we call it head. One side of the coin, we call it tail. Right? If we have a circle, we call the head, one side head, one side tail. So on the magnet, also one side is north, one side is south, or pole, or both are poles. So the strength of the magnet are on the top and the bottom. What about in between in the center? Not so strong. Is weak. In the, in, the, in the middle, is weak. At the end is strong, at the end is strong. You understand? So in the middle is weak, similar to all this. So this point also worth taking note. Okay? Number five, important. Remember this, huh? You have a magnet. I'm, I have to draw to illustrate this. And then you have a paper clip. And then you have another bar magnet. And then you have a north. And then you have a north. And then you have a south. You have a south. And then you have another bar magnet, and then you have a south, and then north. Okay. So based on this, the paper clip will be attracted. Based on this, this one will be repelled. This one will be attracted. Okay. So you have three objects. One object, two object, three object. One is a magnetic material. But the other two are magnets because they have poles okay so let's say i gave you an object it's a blind object let's say all of you now close your eyes i'm putting one object in your hand okay i'm putting one object in your hand and i say this object is attracted by a magnet this object in your hand is attracted by a magnet so is the object in your hand a magnet or a paper clip Is this object in your hand? I close your eyes. I put a hand. You don't see, or of course you can't see because it's an imaginative object. I put it in your hand. And then that object is attracted by a magnet. Is it a paper clip or a magnet? Or can be either one, right? Answer is both. Can be both. But I say, hey, now I put another object. And this object is repelled by a magnet. Repelled. Is it a paper clip or a magnet? It's repelled. Once you hear the repel word, hey, Repel. Paper clip cannot be repelled. Paper clip can only be attracted. So if I if Stali is saying repel, that means it must be a magnet only. He must have given you a magnet. Okay? Okay. Okay. Hedwin, you want to talk? Yes. Yes, what is it? Um the I want to answer a question. Which one? This one? Yes. Yeah, okay. I've already explained how to find out what these objects A, B, C could be, right? Yes. Yeah, how do we determine? Based on the diagram on the left, you can see there's only one that is pushed away by the magnet. Okay, let me highlight for the whole class. You can see this one. Push away by the magnet means repel, right? Only one was repel, right? So this C yes. must be the what? Magnet. Yes, only C because it's repelled is magnet. The other two is not repelled, it's attracted. So it can be a magnet or an, a magnetic material. It could be like a paper clip. Right? Yes. So to determine that, okay, so I'm going to put it can be a magnet or paper clip because iron pin, since in the question they say iron pin or not a magnet at all, like an ice cream stick, which is one of the options given also. Like ice cream stick is made of wood, right? So that also can. Now, so to in order to identify, we know C is must be a magnet. So I'm going to circle on the answer C. That means the other two I can cancel already. Am I right? Like this. Yes. Yeah? Okay, good. Now we don't know the identity of A and B. 
to know the identity of a and b we need to look at a new table which is the other one did it attract or not here a attract a a attract b didn't attract did not so b must be the ice cream stick right yes and a must be the iron pin iron pin this is how yeah correct thank you so much okay now all of you are interested in answering me good 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 okay let's go so answer is c yeah am i supposed to write it down for you let's write it down okay betty bought a magnet brought a magnet near a metal paper clip 5 cm it was attracted when it was still 5 cm away based on observation which of the conclusion can betty make just read all four and then ask yourself which one of these makes sense which one don't make sense that's all okay the north pole is the strongest no why who's going to answer me Let's see if you raise hand and I'll call you. The North Pole is the strongest. Is it the strongest? No. Both poles are the strongest. Hi, Viji. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm only looking at the option B. Option B says North Pole is the strongest. Is it a right statement to say? No, because like the both both poles are strongest because it's not like North Pole is like the strongest than South Pole, and then it cannot yeah. like. <clears throat> Correct. Very good. That's why I was looking for. Understand, class, everybody. So he's absolutely right. He said there's no difference between the North and the South. Both of them are just uh, just like saying black and white. Is black stronger than white? white stronger than black no right they are both colors so a pole is not strong based there's just identity they are named north named south based on their identity of what they can attract okay so when it's like poles they repel and unlike poles they attract so it doesn't mean one is stronger than the other both poles are as strong as long as they are poles they are strong okay together okay next the paper clip is made of non magnetic material cannot be right they say the paper clip is made of non-magnetic material. How can it be? It is made because it's attracted. Betty observed that the paper clip was attracted. So it is made of magnetic material. It's a wrong statement. The last one, D says, only the North Pole of a magnet can attract. Eh? Same thing as what VG said, right? VG said, hey, how come only North Pole is strong? No, no, no. South Pole also can be strong. It's equally strong. Same thing here. Only North Pole can attract. No, no. South Pole also can attract. Okay, Both can attract. Only when it comes to attract what? Maybe you can attract another pole, then you can talk about that. Okay. Finally, the only conclusion here is A then. If the rest of the statements are wrong, A is correct. What is A? A magnetic force can act at a distance. It shows that you Betty doesn't need to touch the paper clip. As long as she is near it, she can already attract. That means the magnetic force can attract something without even touching it, can be from a distance. Okay. It's like Superpower heroes, right? People can, but that is, we don't have that power, do we? Do we have the power to pull people without any touching them? That's a whole other concept, right? <laughs> okay. Okay, now, this one is a diagram. Let's digest the diagram very quickly. It's like a fishing rod that has a magnet, and then your fish also has the magnet. So let me highlight. You see here, this one, and this one. They are saying it actually attracted. So what can X and Y be? Okay. One has to be a magnet. One has to be. Okay. One has definitely has to be a magnet. The other one can be a magnet. Or magnetic material. Which is come under the CISN. Right. But cannot be ice cream stick. Right. It cannot be ice cream stick. It cannot be wood. If it is wood, can you attract your fish? No. So definitely cannot be wood. So what are the options? You must have magnet in it. Can be magnet and magnet? Can. Can be magnet and iron block? Can. Because they will attract. So your game will be possible if you use these objects. 
But can it be copper block and steel block? Cannot because there's no magnet in it. And copper is not a magnetic material. So therefore, answer must be B and C only. Got it? Straightforward. Right. This question, I'm going to just tell you the answer and go. No need to explain. So you guys tell me the answer. Okay, easy. Weakest magnet, of course, Y. Strongest magnet, of course, X. So answer is D. Super, super easy. No need to go through. Okay, this one. Also easy. Always a question and the diagram looks very complicated. However, they are not really. Why? Because the question says, what could Ahmad conclude? When it comes to this, you just need to read the four and see what makes sense again. Okay? What makes sense? The magnet has no effect. Okay, just see what's happening. The magnet go near the iron button. First, it attract one button. After that, it attract two button. How? Because it goes near. 8 cm still not enough to attract two buttons because not near enough. Then 5 cm, good enough to attract both the buttons. So that's what's happening. Okay, so the strength of magnetism is dependent on how close it goes. So let's read. The magnet has no effect. Hello, how can it be? It has some effect. The magnet can attract less buttons when it is nearer to them. No, it can attract more buttons when it is nearer to them. The magnet can attract more buttons when it is nearer to them. Yay, correct, this is what I want. The magnet is stronger when it is 8 cm away. No, the magnet is stronger when it is 5 cm away. So this is wrong. Alright? So answer is C. Ling, 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 ling. Ling, 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 ling. Like some phone bell, right? Whose name is Ling, ling? Okay, I know Natalie Ng, but not Ling, ling. Sounds familiar. Okay, there's a Natalie Ng in the class, um, but there's no Ling, ling. Okay, Ling, ling is a person here on this question who plays an iron ball. This one is like magic, you know, sometimes you see the nail moving on its own, but actually you put a magnet below to push it. You can play with this magic trick with your friends. You put a paper cardboard on top, which doesn't look too suspicious. Then put a nail and then below your hand, you don't show them, you just play with the magnet, you just move it. What will happen? Then on top, your other hand, you just say, you see, I'm going to move my, move the iron nail with my hand. See, it's moving. But on, on the other hand, thankfully God gave us two hands, right? So it's easy for magic trick. One hand, you show them, you see, I'm going to move it with my hand on top in the air. But actually, you're moving it with the other hand, your magnet under the table or under the cardboard. This is what's going to happen. You can try if you get access to the magnet and iron. It's quite fun. Okay? What will be observed? If Ling Ling moves the magnet along the cardboard, the magnet will bend? No. The magnet will repel? No. It should attract, actually. So it's attracted and it will therefore... Because the attractor, it will move along with the magnet. It will move, yes. It will remain in the position, no. So answer is C. Because you will move, because you attract. You tried it once, huh, Pranshu? Very good. Pranshu has already tried with magnet. Okay, are you at home, you don't have magnets? Try and get some magnets in your science lab. Just tell your teacher, Cher, can you bring some magnets to the classroom tomorrow? He got no choice, but he has to bring, or she has to bring. Your science teacher has a lot of things in the science lab and sometimes he or she doesn't have time to bring you to the lab. Then you just tell them, just tell your teacher, suggest teacher, sure, if you can't bring us to the lab, it's okay, just bring the equipment to the classroom. So she or he will bring some equipment to the classroom like magnet and then the teacher will say like what? And then you can suggest to them like magnets or some little stuff that's not so dangerous. Even paper clips you can bring on your own. Then you can volunteer, sure, I'll bring my own paper clips, we try. And then you can do all these kind of things, fun things in class. You have to be proactive to tell your teacher sometimes, okay? Because they think that you guys are not interested. Show them that you're interested, okay? Last question of the day. We're going to finish. Wayne arranged three bar magnets together as shown below. Later, he arranged the magnet. Now, this is the type of question that 
can come um, in primary five and primary six when you're a bit, little bit more advanced, but it's very, very easy. Okay, because they are in alphabets, very hard to see, right? So how many of you can find out what is the possible now? They'll give you one example on the left and they'll ask you what possible configuration can you come up with from A to B to C to D? Because sometimes B and C are the, like for example in A, right? This C and B could be the same polarity, same pose. So hence they should be repelling, but they're attracting. So when they attract, then you say is not possible. So this is how we make it not possible because in this instance, C and B are opposite pole. No, but it's not. But in here, C and B are different poles. So it is possible. So we took the wrong example. So how do we do that? <laughs> we need to identify, just give F, E, C, B and all a name. Can be north or south. Just start with anything that you like. Say south first. Okay, let's do south. Let's name this guy south then this guy must be north am i right oh no if i do that you can't see the alphabet so let's give north south if this is south this must be north because it attracts then this must be south why because it's the other side of the pole i go from magnet to magnet i jump from magnet to magnet okay now if this attracts this guy so this must be north this attracts this guy this must be south that's all if you chose the other label, it is totally fine. But now, all you have to do is go to the other side and rename this by the same name they've given for the D here. D is S. So all the D you just put S. A is N. So all the A's you give it N. C is N. So N. And so on, right? E is S. I find all the E's and just give them a new name. And I find all the F's and I give it a new name. And then I check the possibility. But by now you're already doing, right? By now you're already doing the possibility check. B is S. Now, have I named all of them? Yes, I have. And you can check whether the two guys touching each other, right? The two guys touching each other, can they have the same NN or SS? Cannot. They must have different. Only then they attract. If they are the same, if there's NN touching each other, it's not possible because they're supposed to repel, but they're touching each other. It's not possible. So let's look at all the areas where they're touching each other. Where am I looking at? Here. Here. Okay, it's correct. Here. Eh? It's wrong. Because at N, and the end is touching each other. Cannot. So this is already out. This is not possible. Here so far, okay. B is okay. Here, A is a... Uh... Oh, this one not possible. Right? And then where is not possible again? Anywhere touching? Ah, this is not possible. This is not possible. You cannot have two same poles touching each other. Therefore, not possible, not possible, not possible. And then you find that B is the only one that you see, hey, they look like they're okay because they're all touching each other and they have different poles. That's why. This is how you do it. Okay. So since I helped you how to do it, since this is the last question and I'm going to say goodbye, I'm going to give you a chance. Oh, this is me last night. I got stuck to the fridge because I was wearing a magnetic watch. And then uh, all the tools from the kitchen also got stuck to the... Why? Because the fridge is a what? The fridge is a... All of you know the biggest magnet we have in the house is the fridge. Every part of the magnet, every part of the fridge is magnetic. Anything that you want to stick on it, you can go stick. So if you want to test whether you have an object that is magnetic or not, just go near the fridge and put it on the fridge, right? If it sticks to the magnet, if the fridge is magnetic. If it's not, it drops off. Am I right? All of you have played with this since you are young, right? You have played even with the alphabets, A, B, C, D with magnets, put on the fridge. You have tons of things on the fridge. And uh, yeah, this is me, unfortunately. But I got myself off by helping some. Uh, what is that? Help. What's that? What, what help? Who do, who do we call when we are in trouble? 911? That's American. Okay, those of you who are watching American shows is only 911. Cool. Okay. The class has ended, but 
if you want to leave, you can. But if you want to try this question, you can also, because I still have two minutes. This is for you all to, to, uh, to put into practice what I just taught you on question 11. On the left shows the diagram. On the right shows the possibility. Which one of the following is a possible arrangement? Okay, so I will help you by identifying, then you just tell me the answer. But maybe some of you get answer very fast. Okay, so I have to put north, south. I just start anyhow. I can just put straight away north, south, anyhow. But then I have to follow properly afterwards. The first north, south, I can put anyhow. After that, I have to follow properly based on the attracting poles. Okay, I got it. So this side, I have to do the same thing. A is N. So I go to A, I find N. And then B is S. Okay, then I find H is S. C is N. I'm helping you because since you guys can't have a paper to do this, I'm helping you to do it. So you can actually see the answer coming up. All the C's are N's. Then G is, this fun actually, G is N also. Then D is S, E is N, finally F is S. Wow, done. Now, there can be only one correct answer. Look for the ones that are touching each other and they are the same, okay? Cannot, cannot, cannot. Got it? Got it? Can, right? Because if north and north, we are supposed to repel, but in the picture shows they are attract, so cannot, it's wrong. Whereas D, can, D is good. Can. Okay, this is how we do it. And you will, I assure you, from primary four to six, by the time you go to primary six, you will have this type of question appearing in your life for another 10 more times, even PSLE. Clear? Okay, I'm happy for the, today's lesson. I will see you all next week with the next part of Magnets with a video, I promise. And all of you come back and stay safe during the week. I know it's tough being in class with your masks. Okay, try to drink more water and try to wash your hands a lot. Keep the mask clean. Don't make the mask dirty and then try to wear it on your nose. That's worse, right? Who wants to wear a dirty mask on your nose? Nobody, right? Come home, wash, wash your mask and then keep it clean. Try to have a different mask for Monday versus Tuesday. Then wear the same one. Every alternate day, change your mask so that one mask can get to dry. Because I'm sure most of you are wearing washable masks. Great. Who wants to talk? Kason, you have a question? Kason, I know you're showing me the... A lot of you can see Kason showing a compass, right? So Kason wants to talk. I let him talk for a while. I have a compass. I also have all the magnets that you showed, but it's missing. Wow. Why? Circuit breaker, they went hiding. <laughs> it's from my bookshop. Yeah. I know most of your bookshops have. So if you're interested... And you do have the financial means or you want to ask your mommy some money to buy, you can because it's for lessons. So you can give your mom an excuse. Say, hey, it's for my magnetic lesson. I want to buy some magnets. Go and buy it. Because at the end of the day, if you have magnets in your own hands, you're actually going to appreciate them better and learn stuff better. The magnets are interesting, right? Um, a couple of weeks ago, we showed some videos on uh, Max, Science Max, right? Go and yeah. see his uh, videos. Yeah. Go and search on YouTube for his magnets one. Did you all see the magnets one already. Yeah, it was super nice. And I put it on my website also. That's why. So, yeah. I put it on the website as well. That's why Kason saw it. Because I, when I directed you to my lesson 22, I know some of you wanted to see what else you wanted to watch, right? And all the videos are over there. What is your website? 88tuition.com. Go to 88tuition.com, go to lesson 22, and find the answers of videos over there. As Science Max videos, has some uh, cartoon videos on magnetism and all that. So try to be prepared for next week's lesson by looking at those videos. Yes, you have signed up, I know, but you have not viewed those videos. Go and view those videos. Clear? Okay, time for me to check up and wear my mask again. No, no, no. I'm at home, so no need to wear mask. I'm so used to wearing masks everywhere now. You also, right? I'm going to be wearing masks a lot nowadays. Wow, it's really, really terrible. I really hope this TB is over soon without masks and we can just breathe as normally. Bye-bye.